Hello, name's Danny. Today we're going to be taking a look at COVID-19. By this point, you already know the effects of it, either by TV, internet, or word of mouth. Hopefully not that last one because they're supposed to be at home, unless they're an essential worker. The news on this pandemic is bleak. A lot of people are infected. It hits hard, and many have passed away because of it. It brought many big countries to their knees, and have strained hospitals to their limit. I'd like to talk about regular people and their handling of this ongoing pandemic. What you hear might surprise you, or inspire you. Whatever the case, here are some of my personal picks to look at. Small heads up, I do my best to research these, but I might not get everything right. Other than that, let's begin. To put these stories into context, COVID-19 began its spread in China in December 2019 and has since spread across the world. It's May 2nd, 2020. As of writing this, there have been over 3 million cases worldwide and 200,000 deaths, both growing by the day. It is because of this highly contagious spreading that most parts of the world have gone into lockdown. You are ordered to stay home, but if you do go out, probably a good idea to wear a mask, not touch your face, and always wash your hands, among other preventative measures. Those who do get it might know they got it. The symptoms range from nothing, to fever and fatigue, to coughing up blood and kidney failure. It also makes breathing really hard. It is why people need a ventilator. Sometimes it's a matter of life and death, and unfortunately, there's not enough to go around. With how fast this disease has spread, the supply people ratio is just too high. I can't imagine being a doctor and making the choice of who gets a ventilator. There was a motorbike riding Italian priest who had to make this difficult choice too, named Don Giuseppe Baradelli. Already having health problems prior, he too caught COVID-19. He was given a respirator by the parish community, but decided to give it to someone else who needed it, someone younger. Who is Don Giuseppe? A very hard-working priest, from what I read. He was ordained a priest in 1973, and from there had assignments in San Giuseppe, Calozio, Gavrina, Forano al Serio, and Casanigo. Busy man. These were in the span of many years. And unfortunately, there isn't much more to read. A lot of his internet presence appears to be from COVID-19 articles that all say he was a hard worker and did what he could to help others, be it through prayer or by solving economic problems by knowing who to ask for help. Being the mayor of Forano for a couple of years, he did open up a self-help center which helped a great many families and stragglers. Don did a lot of work, and through it all he had a smile on his face. Smiling in the face of hardship is definitely something to be admired, double if they do so much too. When he came back to Castreta after his visit to Lover Hospital ended, he was greeted with applause. He lived to be 72. Another place we will be finding people applauding is at baby showers. Yes, those are still a thing. It's an important day to new families, and squandering it due to the world turning into poop is not fair to them. See, this is when adapting to the environment comes into play. That's what a family from South Atlanta did. They were expected to have a baby soon, and they made it as safe as can be. But how do you ask? Let me explain. Okay, social distancing. That rule applies. No one can be close. So how can you possibly celebrate and give the family their essential presence? By doing a drive-by. No, he dropped their gift near the mom-to-be, about six or more feet away. Someone, probably the husband, goes and grabs it, brings it to the wife, and the couple opens it up. Using protective gloves and a mask, you know, make sure you wear that, the people in the car can see their reactions and then take off, letting the next person, you know, give their gift. Does it sound a bit lifeless? Yes, of course it does. Of course, you can still do flashy things like send adorable invitations, letting people know how it's going to work, play music, put up 99 red balloons, add a sign, and even tell the cars to honk as they pass by. Get that enthusiasm going. Of course, make sure your neighbors are cool with this. After that, you can hang out virtually in a group and gossip and such after the gifts are delivered. Fun all around, had safely. And who doesn't value safety during these times? Who cares? Those who don't value safety and go out grocery shopping without proper safety equipment are endangering those who are more susceptible, like old people. Basically, they're a public menace. Now, if you're young and have safety equipment on and follow the rules on social distancing, then you're good. Go ahead and shop, champ. Some of those young, smart people thought about those older people and how they will need help getting those groceries because they're so much more susceptible. Well, these young Zoomers came together to help out boomers and created a delivery service. Gen Z helping out the elderly and immunocompromised. As of now, they helped over 3,000 boomers and over 26 cities with over 300 volunteers. And nicest of all, there is no delivery fee. Gen Z knows what they're doing. They got instructions on their website for how to be as non-contaminated as possible. This is exemplary stuff here. Gives me hope that age doesn't mean a thing, but that they're a community, and in a community, you help each other out. And there we have it, a few uplifting stories that came out of this COVID-19 pandemic. 
from sacrifice, adapting, and helping out those in need. There's always sparks of positivity in this whirlwind of uncertainty. I myself will do my best to help not spread the virus. I got my mask. And I got my gloves. I personally go out walking at the Forest Preserve nowadays instead of the neighborhood. No one went to that place before the virus, and quite frankly, it hasn't changed. 